Marlon drove straight down to the England camp after playing in a big club game and Eddie greeted him saying, how are you feeling mate? Marlon honestly replied saying, oh, a bit tired. Eddie told him to fuck off. Why don't you just fuck off then, mate? <laughs> what? Marlon replied, if you're tired, then fuck off. I don't want tired players here. Just fuck right off. <laughs> I think I was there. I'm not there, but I was in camp at the stage. And I remember, yeah. I remember that happening, I think, that because he came down quite late and not many of the boys even saw him. By the next morning, he'd already gone. Um, anyone, anyone else got a weird mind games treatment like that? Who was not working hard at the camp? No, he probably can't tell us that, actually. Probably, probably counterintuitive, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep yourself to yourself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> This week's offload is brought to you in partnership with Erwin Mitchell, the official legal partner of England Rugby. The Erwin Mitchell Mentoring Club is developing a community of mentors to help young players navigate life's ups and downs through rugby. They're creating positive experiences for 35,000 teenagers, giving them the opportunity to develop both personally and within the game we all love. That's the human touch that matters to legal experts, Erwin Mitchell. If you could help inspire the next generation, search for the Erwin Mitchell Mentoring Club on Facebook to join them. Hello and welcome to this week's uh, Rugby Pass Offload with me, Mark Edwards. Uh, joined as always by the dynamic duo of Glasgow and Scotland forward, Ryan Wilson, uh, sunning himself in Dubai as we speak, as well as Bristol Bears prop, Max Leif. And we're delighted to have longtime friend of the show and fan favourite, Exeter and England wing, uh, Jack Knoll with us. Um, I say Hello to Ryan. He has not even bothered coming on right now. Can we please just pile in on him because Drop he's too him. busy just having the time of his life over in Dubai? Embarrassing, isn't it? What's going on? Well, have we got a reason for this? What is the reason? Is he on the Bevs? He's on the Berios? <laughs> we, we are unimportant to him now. We're just, My God. We're just the mugs who are here on time. Has he got a week off or something? Or Glasgow, Glasgow not playing? They're not playing for weeks now, are they? Are they not? Why? Well, because they, they, they have break, do they? They have a massive one. I think the next oh. game is like 26th of November or something. Oh, wow. My God, so, imagine. Uh, little little soiree in Dubai. Oh, that would go quite wonderfully right about now. <laughs> Wait, how long have you boys got it? off? We get like one week for the bye week. Have you had your bye week yet, Jack? No. no. Get our oh. bye week is Christmas, mate. Oh, dreamy. Oh, no. That is fun. unreal. <laughs> Oh, that's a good time for it, actually. If, to be fair, the, the bye week with us, all the boys were off to the Balearics. They went straight to like Lanzarote and that. A few okay. days. A few lads broke their virginity and uh, might be for the, had never been before, academy boys. I was like, your worlds will be changed, young men. And so it was. <laughs> but there's a few stories when they came back. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is Ryan just, he's just hovering in the background. I can't hit. believe he's out in the bottom. I'm fuming of that. I don't even know if we should get him on. I think we should just cancel him. Fair enough. You've, you've, you're gone. You're dead to us, Ryan. <laughs> um, I really want him to be by the pool, though. I don't know why. I just feel like it would just be so wonderfully twatty of him. It would be ideal. I'd love that. <laughs> um, anyway, let's, uh, whilst, whilst he's not still here, let's, uh, let's crack it. Let's, you know what? Let's, just, let's crack in and start anyway. Um, out out of anything like that, Jack. Let's just go. Let's go on, straight on to your uh, very hard fought victory down at Gloucester on Friday. Now, how tough of a game was that for you, lads? Um, it was tough, <laughs> extremely tough. Too close for, for comfort as well. Um, they're pretty good this year, to be fair to them. Um, so yeah, obviously for us to come away, we're in a bit of a, a sticky patch at the moment um, as 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 a club. So uh, no, it was good. I think. You know, we got that win away at Wasps a couple of weeks ago. Lost the Irish at home last week. Um, but not to take anything away from Irish, they were pretty good as well. Um, but it was one that we felt like we we, we proper needed this week. So, um, you know, hopefully now we can carry out, carry that on and uh, start winning at home as well. Most importantly, that was your first game on a plastic pitch in what feels like an eternity. How is your body? Yeah, first and last, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> No, no, no. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I, love, I was like, oh no. I'd love to be able. To, I'd love to be able to say that. Um, my body is honestly like I spoke to the, some of the Gloucester boys after, and they say you get used to it. I know everyone always says that, but what's the day today? Tuesday. I actually trained a little bit today, and I felt okay. Um, 
yesterday was tough. Saturday, Sunday, I felt like I got hit by a bus. Um, I just don't know how you can get used to those pitches, but that's just my body. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll be all right. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. If you don't play on them anymore, you don't. I couldn't play after the games this season. We've got Glasgow. Obviously, Worcester have got one. Saris have got one. Gloucester have got one. And who's the other one? Newcastle. Newcastle, yeah. Yeah. Well, show, so show us the scars, Jack. I can't. I'm, I'm injured, mate. I'm wounded. Uh, oh, that's decent. Hell. Iodine spray all over it. Iodine oh. all over them, mate. Oh, God. I'm alright. Like it's just bending my knees now, and I can't sleep because. Why you wear skins? Because I strapped my knee. Oh, of course. You can't wear it, and you wouldn't wear the skins over it. It'd be just too niggly. We roll the tape up and stuff. Yeah, it would be a bit annoying, wouldn't it? Would you yeah. wear skins in a game? <laughs> what if I? Was oh, here it is. <laughs> a winger. Oh wow. Mate, how sweaty. You are very moist. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh my God, I am so hot. Got any air conditioning in there? <laughs> well, I've just I've just jogged, right? I've literally just jogged back from dinner, left Bex and the kids with a mate of mine. It, they're all on the piss. I'm in I'm in this place called Pier Seven, beautiful setting in the Dubai Marina. Couldn't think of a better place to do a podcast. I'm like, this is perfect. I've I've linked up the Wi-Fi. I've spoke to the manager. I'm like, listen, I've got to do a podcast in a bit. I'm going to be on there for an hour. We've got somewhere quiet. So they're like, yeah, yeah. Linking up to their like management Wi-Fi. I'm like, perfect. How good. About 10 minutes before we come on, this like slimy Russian DJ has slipped his way across the dance floor. He's like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, what is that? What's going on with that? And they're like, no, no, he's uh, yeah, he's going for it. I'm like, all right, ruined. So that's why I folded, folded the laptop up and started jogging down here back to the apartment. Which is like a ten minute walk, but man, I've done it in about two minutes, dying of sweat. I bing, 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 and lift. So sorry I'm a bit late, but I'm here. I'm here. The things I do for this podcast, bloody hell. Right, we were just talking about the uh, Jack's basically lost both of his legs to Astro Burns uh, from from the plastic pitches. We literally uh, so... spoke about this a few weeks ago, as well, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did, mate. And since then, because of your rant, they brought in the old leggings. So why weren't you wearing them? Because I, I was never going to wear leggings anyway, but I strapped my knees and stuff. And yeah, no, I'm plus it looks village, doesn't it? <laughs> have you have you got leg tattoos? So I, I've always wanted to get my knees done, but this is the main reason why I've never had my knees tattooed. Because, because you just rub it off. It would instantly come off. One game on a 4G pitch, it's gone. So I've saved money and not done it yet. <laughs> How ridiculous! There's things you wait for to do after rugby. Like that, for example. Jack can't get his knees done. Mate, did I see you get your ears tattooed the other day? Yeah, I've got my left ear done. Yeah. Have you seen this, boys? Show us it. Yeah, it's cracking. I was actually a big fan of this. It didn't hurt either. Can you see it? Yeah, you, well, it wouldn't, would it? Because you not really. It didn't hurt either. I, I literally prepared myself on the, on the bed for the worst, and it was fine. Do your do your tattoos? Are you, are you do you just do them for the crack for fun, or do they? Um, have yeah, I'm past that stage of them. Yeah, you're like, just like I just think they look hectic, look, so you just get them all over. Yeah, no, you absolutely. First couple, first couple, you try and make a little bit sentimental, um, and then I find once you get past them, you're just like, right, that's it. I'm going to try and myself. <laughs> yeah, we'll just finish off with that with that Gloucester match. Obviously, yeah. pit, uh, you weren't a fan of the pitch. Uh, who was who was the toughest Gloucester player out there for you? Ackerman's always up there, isn't he? He's pretty physical. Um, I always think that Ludlow geezer, he freaks me yeah, out. Like, one, second you, on. one second you're carrying, next minute you're looking up at the sky. You're like, what's going <laughs> on there? And you see Ludlow's massive frame <laughs> under you. But I just, when I play on those pitches, I can't get past the fact that it's actually a match and not a training game. Um, <laughs> and I look at it as if the floor is lava. So <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> Can you find yourself actually trying like not to fall over as well? Like, oh, probably um, good. You're trying to stand your feet a bit more. I'd go into the game thinking that, and then once you're in the game, you know what it's like. You don't really yeah. think a lot. Um, but I did at once. I, I, I think I got through like 20 minutes, and I was thinking, you know what? I've not cut my knees yet. I'm feeling pretty good. This is, uh, maybe I'm going to get away with this. So I should not have thought that because literally next carry, I, I honestly felt the skin peeling off my knees like it was a cheese grater. And I was like, why have I even jinxed myself there? So, uh, and that, that was it then. And it, once it's off, it's off, isn't it? So um, I kind of dealt with it for the rest of the game and then suffered with it after. So you definitely don't think you'll be wearing skins ever? Or is I it think you wear skins. I think I'm going to fully plaster up next time. 
hyper fix. Yeah, yeah all hyper fix. Yeah. Yeah. Hyper all fix all over. Yeah. Yeah, the other option because me and Max we spoke about this last week. We were like, we don't we don't actually run fast enough to get any sort of grazing. Like we never move that quick in a game. Speak Max, for yourself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Speak for yourself, right? <laughs> your other option is just to yeah, K tape, K tape your whole body. That'd, yeah. that'd be quite good. I tried yeah. I tried Vaseline. No, no, I, that'll just I come put, off too soon. Yeah, it did. Literally came yeah. off for the next one. That was it. It was gone. But it was quite funny because I heard boys complaining about it. Um, if they made a tackle and it was all, like all over their forearms and stuff after, and I was I like, we should have had, "It's the pitch, then, isn't it?" So it's not my fault. No, but you know, people don't do that. I, I remember playing against Louis Pickamos, and he'd cover his legs fully, cover his legs in Vaseline so he'd slip out of tackles. That's fair enough. It's quite smart, actually. I'm, I'm and gonna it, start you. again, horrible when you hit him and you'd be covered in vats. You're like. Sake. I'm say, like, lying no, on the floor said, after being bowled by pick and molds. It's, it was always, you know, just that added, like, hey, I have that as well. Face full of Vaseline, mate. <laughs> I'll tell you, does the opposite of that is Carl. You know, with the sticky spray, you know, there's the spray, the sticky stuff, like the rugby ball hand wax. Mate, he gets the actual, like, the that of just like it looks like Dax, you know that old school like hair product every kid used to use. The green one. Yeah, the, yeah, the green one. Yeah, yeah, and he just wax, puts it all wax. over his hands. Yeah, and you're doing line outs of sync, and then suddenly you touch someone else, and you're like, "What is that on my hands?" You just got like fly spray all over you. Oh, man. He cakes himself in it. It's unbelievable. He uses <laughs> that, and then he uses the spray as well, doesn't he? Yeah, on top, he's like, "Fetch me the spray, bro. Fetch me the spray. I need it. I need it now." And you're just like, "Okay." All right. Those boys come around the huddle before the game, you know, like gin each other up, and they, they go with the open palm, and you slap them, and then you're covered in it. That yeah. pisses me off. I'm, I'm strictly fist pumps now because I know you don't know who's lurking around. Who's with that right. stuff. Yeah. Horrible stuff. Horrible stuff. So true. And there's another defeat for Bath. Jack, you come up against them in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, do you expect Stuart Hooper to still be in charge when you do? <laughs> I won't have a clue, mate. <laughs> I expect so. Not many people change halfway through the season. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're struggling a bit, aren't they? Um, I mean, they've obviously got a few injuries and stuff. And um, it was Toby announced that he was leaving today as well, wasn't he? He's going back to Wales. But yeah, I'm I'm not too sure what's going on there. Obviously, Anthony Watson got injured last week as well, which is which is pretty tough. But they've got some good players there still. Honestly, I wouldn't have a clue what is going on. But um, you would expect them to to have picked up a you know couple of wins or not even not lost as badly as what they have so far so uh who knows what can happen nowadays a uh, quick couple of things from from that match uh, mike williams red card dangerous clear out mike williams is not going to be the only one in front of the disciplinary panel he'll be joined by the bath kit man steve middleton uh, who was also sent off for swearing at the ref uh, water boys kit men all causing damage uh, how <laughs> what's going on how do we rectify it we had one against wasps a couple of weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> Behind the boats. <laughs> yeah, behind the boats. I don't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> uh, the the bath kit man, that's, that's got to be frustration, isn't it? Like, you know, Midi's it's always, probably it's making it worse. You're under the pump. Just Max, you'll know who he is. What's he Steve like? Steve Middleton, a hell of a boy, but yeah. very zealous on the touchline. <laughs> Loves the noise pollution, gets into the touchies. Never too much, but yeah, maybe he overstepped the envelope this time. But yeah, I can... I can fully see him losing his head. Like he's so much a part of the DNA emotionally of that team as well. So he's just so invested. So well, I love that he's on the touchline as well. That's brilliant. Yeah, he's right there. He's fully amongst. Is he, Mike, is he mic'd up as well? No, I don't think so. But he <laughs> loves being right in the in the in the sheds with the boys. Um, but yeah, I could. Yeah, it's not out of character. That's going I'm off sure going does. off topic here. Kit men. How important are they to a club? Oh, like, that's I'm, great. You, every, every club you go to, or you know, international teams, you hear about the kit man. There's always something. He's always a character like ours. He's been there for, I think he's been there for 20 years. Shizzle, he's called, and it's an absolute legend. Heart and soul of the club. Like if Shizzle's not there, the club will fall apart. Even though he does nothing, and they're always lazy wankers as well. <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Like I'm guessing you boys have the same, won't you? There's no doubt about it. Well, we've got the scariest one. We're a bit behind time. We've only just got one. What? Yeah, we, I've always been asking for a while for him. We've got Smeagol, young little intern. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Gollum, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but Smeagol, you're right, though. He is heart and soul of the team, isn't he? Like, he's there every single day. Boys love him. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is with the kit men as well, but they love their stash. It's like it's, like it's theirs, isn't it? 
Yeah. And again, my precious, as we call it Spiegel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, no, but they're right. You're right. They are there. The team needs them to tick, don't they? Uh, What's your kit man like, Max? Oh, mate. The scariest kit man. You do exactly what you're told. But it's Junior Paramore. Used to play for Samoa and Gloucester. My God. Ginormous hands. Really like, like, really like melodious voice though. But he looks like a straight up Polynesian warlord, like classic ball carrying bat rower from the, the Samoan heritage. Like savage. Re- really lovely bloke, but you just like the respect is due. Unbelie- unbelievable chap though. They work so hard. I love it. Like their hours are mad. Like they're always there. It's, it's yeah. JP's the man. See, our, my, our one, he was the first person I met at Glasgow. I remember when I came up here at like 20, whatever, 20 years old, I think it was. And I pulled into the train station and he turned up and picked me up. And I didn't have a clue what he was saying because he was <laughs> Glaswegian, proper, full like Glaswegian. And he just talked to me the whole way to this round. And I was like, who the fuck is this bloke? And what is he saying? Didn't have a clue. Little did I know I've been picked up by the kit man. That's how important his job is. He was picking up superstars like me at 20 years old. <laughs> Yeah, the kit man will get him off the train, don't worry. Jack, has Schmeagel actually applied for the job? You said he's an intern. Is he going to get the no, job? No, no, he started as an intern. I think he's in properly now. He's, just, he's, he's a young fella um, that we literally just brought in. So I think he's being employed now. Um, still plays a bit of rugby himself. I think they pull him into uh, training now and again as well when he's a bit short of numbers. I know they used to. Um, I don't think he does it as much anymore. Maybe when he, when he, when he was an intern, he did. But... Um, no, he's an absolute legend. Boys look after him. He's like, his little, like our little brother. So, uh, no, he's a good lad. Quick one on uh, Joe Marler, who could be in trouble after tweeting incompetent knobs about the officials sending his teammate Dino Lamb to the bin. Uh, what, do we, what do we think of his comments? Uh, disgraceful. I don't know why we're laughing. Quite funny. Uh, I don't know. Again, if, he I just... it, if he words it different, he might be all right. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, I didn't see the game, but I saw his tweet and I was just like, something's happened now. And then... <laughs> just another one for the book, though. You've got to throw some of that out there. If you, you know, he's going for a bit of a showbiz career. He's got to just start throwing stuff out there, just seeing what happens. So he knows, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, smart, smart. But, but yeah, it's really good to have done that. That's really bad. <laughs> are you guys, wait, are you under strict kind of media restrictions in terms of what you can and can't do like do you have somebody tapping you on the shoulder every every tweet i i haven't yet i'm, I'm pretty sure i've got one coming soon i don't know <laughs> yeah they're pretty, pretty strict up here you do have you often get messages or someone will come and say oh by the way make sure you take take a look at that one or take that one down yeah they're pretty strict on it they um they want to uphold the image of the club and we're representatives oh. of that so yeah, the the values of rugby, it's all very kind of weird and culty. <laughs> Just holding all the players accountable. You can't say that to the refs. The administration? How dare you? And then, yeah, he'll probably get some kind of disciplinary for calling them incompetent knobs. <laughs> yeah, probably should work it back. Yeah, it's a shame. Like, it's, sometimes you feel it does hold players back from showing their true personality, you know, like doing stuff like this. Like, oh, people are always very cagey when they come on here you know and they're yeah. like oh, can i can't i say that can i you know like i mean hoggy jack for a for a sub he literally goes into media hog he is I'm very media trained yeah he is. switches into media so and he is literally media trained down the middle like knows exactly what to say when to say it how to say it and it's the same cliche stuff that comes out so some boys know how to play the system as well but you want personality don't you in rugby and I'm not saying this is the way to do it. I call people knobs, but it's not. <laughs> no one's no one's hurt by it, are they? You can be smart with it. I think that's the way. That's the way to do it. Jack, what's your favourite flavour of Red Bull? By the way, I've just discovered cactus fruit. Yeah, cactus fruit is right. I really like the blueberry and coconut. Sounds disgusting. It's absolutely it's lovely. The problem with the coconut and that one reminds me too much of. Um, What's that stuff called? Um, Malibu. My Malibu. God, it reminds me of Malibu. It gives me yeah. weird flashbacks. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, yeah, a nice one, just as the missus walks in and starts talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so by the way, what's your favourite red bush? She's like, what the fuck are you not talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it was just for the interlude whilst you were off. <laughs> but cactus fruit, wow, wow. Tropical good one's good. Uh, what have we got there? Oh, shall I show you my favourite flavour, actually? <laughs> 
Yeah. This is actually my favorite. The new official well. sponsor. Oh, how good. <laughs> oh, how good. <laughs> Do you like that flavor? Do you like that wine? Oh, oh my God. God. Outstanding. Hold on. Outstanding. Is that like a one off or have you got loads of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bye. Right, Max, that's yeah, Max, please describe what we're seeing for those who are just listening. We've got a wonderful tin of tasty addictive comic that is Red Bull, the founding father of caffeinated beverages. And on said tin is the handsome visage of Jack Knoll's beautiful face. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm back in. Back in. How, how good is that? Oh, by the way, 100% you're taking me to uh, Monaco next year for the Grand Prix on the Red Bull boat. Mate, let's do it. It's class. Any year. I love it. Max, as always, Jack, you let's might go. as well read a passage from an autobiography, and Ryan and Jack have to guess who wrote that book. This is a pretty outrageous outtake, but here we go. <clears throat> Cops have heard enough. One of them comes up to me. Sir, will you turn around and put your hands behind your back? Why? Please just turn around and put your hands behind your back. He pulls the handcuffs off his belt. What's happening here? Am I being arrested? We're taking you down to the precinct for assault. Hang on a second. Are you not going to listen to me? Do I not get my say no? Victor and Den try to reason with the cops. Why are you arresting him? Den asks. A complaint has been made, sir. This woman here has identified him. We take him in. Well, I'm saying he didn't do anything. Why do you believe her and not me? <laughs> what is going on? We're taking him in, sir. I'm about to be put in the back of an NYPD patrol car. As the cop leads me to the door, I catch at the last straw. Check my hand. Does it look like I've just hit someone? They have no interest in examining the condition of my knuckles. They put me in the back seat and I lower my head. The handcuffs are tight against my wrists. Victor sticks his head in the window. Where are you taking him? What precinct? Midtown South. The car pulls away. It's half past 11 in the city that never sleeps. So now I know. I'm being locked up for the night, and there's nothing anybody can do. Sometime after 1 a.m. New York time, 24 hours since I last slept, there's a rap on my bars. Stand up, wait at the front of your cell. Six or seven of us are brought out and handcuffed to each other. I look down and notice that the homeless looking guy in raggedy clothes cuffed to me has only one shoe. They load us into the van, and 10 minutes later, we're led onto a pavement outside Manhattan Detention Complex on White Street, Tribeca. It's more than a holding facility. It's a municipal jail, a concrete monstrosity. They call it the tombs. We wait for the massive steel door to rise up, and we're led through corridors, unhandcuffed and processed again. More fingerprints, and then the killer. Stand there, face the camera. Hold that. Now turn. Side on. Okay, back in line. <laughs> Up at ground level, they put me in a holding cell with about a dozen other inmates. There's more space and less weird activity. It's practically comfortable by comparison. A guy with short dreadlocks, a sideways cap and a super-sized t-shirt gives me the lowdown on his latest bust. He's proper ghetto. In for dr drugs. I understand about 20% of what he says, but I get that it's his 16th time in the tombs. You? First time. I'm called through, across a connecting bridge and down to the New York City Criminal Court. Some kind of clerk meets me outside. Have you got representation? No. He points to a guy in a suit. Okay, he's gonna represent you. My new defense counsel goes, what happened? I tell him the story. He's listening, but he's not taking it in. It's like he's heard it a thousand times. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, I'll say that. Are you pleading guilty? No, I'm not, I just told you. I didn't do anything. Okay. They bring me in, and Shaggy and Victor are there. They've been waiting for hours, taking turns with Den to make sure someone's there for me when I get out. I'm so, so happy to see people I know. 
My client says he wasn't involved, said the lawyer. He pleads not guilty to assault. The judge says he'll see us back here in 10 days. Victor heads off to give the rest of the lads the news. Me and Shaggy walk out onto Center Street, a couple of blocks off Broadway. It's two in the afternoon. Shaggy says we could do with a stiff drink. We've got another half an hour to go or what? (laughs) (laughs) That's the whole book, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, mate, that's outrageous if that's a true story. One whole chapter. Fucking hell. (laughs) Oh, mate, hey, good job with the accents. I mean, I would have done better, obviously. (laughs) They'd have all been German sounding. (laughs) (laughs) I knew knew someone was going to chat that out there. Oh, what was that, Jamaican? I was like, how do I do a New York accent? I was just thinking of um, Sopranos. Why are good? Why I are Why I I'm walking here. I'm fucking walking here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm flick Tony. I'll do a dirty work around here. <laughs> I know who it is already because I know. Do you that, actually? I've heard that story. I think. I think. I think I've heard about that. Well, so, okay. Right. I'll let Jack guess it because I want to have a clue. Right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Give us. This is how we usually decipher this. So obviously, he's Irish. <laughs> oh, no, he's Italian. <laughs> no, no, correct, Jack. Correct. Thank you for deciphering my accent. I don't know. Who, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who's got a. I don't know who's got a book out. Right, he's Irish. Spot on. Who was? Uh, who was Den? Who was Dennis? Front nose. I didn't even hear that bit. Dennis, is it Dennis Buckley? I think I switched off at that stage. One of the big dogs. Big dogs, right? Name me. Go oh, woof, woof. We've already we've already had Paul O'Connell on it. Sean O'Brien. Sean O'Brien. No. Oh, no, it's not him. I know it's not him. Is it a forward? It's a back, I think. Is I it? think it's a back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a back, and he's quite a famous back. That does a bit of TV. Am I? Am I? Am I hot? You're very hot. You're red hot. You're on fire, man. He, he, he plays in the centre. The Driscoll. There you go. The yeah, there we are. Board. Is that a true story then? Yeah. Really unbelievable, isn't it? Fair play. That wouldn't be great going well, to the what, tools. What, but what did he actually? What did he actually do? That's the. That's the. Yeah, we need. I don't. I don't. I just get given these X scripts. I would love to get to the bottom of this story. We'll get Bob next on. Get to the bottom of this. They thought, I think they thought they were scrapping. They thought they'd been in a fight or something, but they hadn't, and they arrested them for it or something like that. Yeah, we're just like they matched. They matched descriptions given. No, I, I thought I, was, I felt like I was there when you were doing it. <laughs> Unreal. I thought I was watching a film. I'm honoured. I'm honoured. Cheers, chaps. <laughs> All right, that's um, well done, Max. That was that was awesome. Yeah, that was the, yeah, the accents were uh, were fabulous. Uh, let's go into the finally into the internationals. Uh, Scotland smashing Tonga sixty fourteen. Carl Steen scoring four tries on his first start for the Scots. Uh, is that? Is that the best international debut you guys can remember? Well, I think it is. For, you know, it must be for Scotland because he's the first person to score four tries at Murrayfield, I think, in, in one game. So uh, he's gone all right. He's gone all right, old Stainer. These boys are like, what, for, when have they ever watched Scotland? Wankers. <laughs> 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 Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That geezer I said was class. Rufus was playing, wasn't he? Yeah. McLean? Oh, he was naughty as well. Some serious scores from him. But yeah. I thought... he, he's going to look a bit unfit, didn't they? I was like, I felt for them. They looked like they hadn't done any sort of preseason. Like some boys were gassed out there. I felt for them. <laughs> uh, lungs, like a crisp packet was the description of one of the, I think the number eight by... Uh... At, at, at yeah, one point, was, you could see it, and you were like, "Oh no!" There was a hell of a bump though on the edge. Was that for Fita? Yeah, that was that was big Walter. For Fita. <laughs> big, that, big Walter. Listen, you ain't gonna get fit uh, wingers that are 125 kilos. No, on agreed, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> no, he looked, he looked not out of place. Yeah, I felt for some of them boys. Yeah. Uh, right, but you you see, uh, let's talk quickly about Carl Steen. Um, how impressed have you been by him? How far do you think he can go? He will go far. He's um he's had a tough time with injuries. He was out out with a knee injury, I think it was, for like well over something like 14, 15 months. Like he came back from it and something wasn't right and he had to redo it. Or it was a no a hamstring, maybe a complete rupture of his hamstring. Um so he took ages coming back from that. But he's like diligent like with what he does and he's uh 
he's one of these like true professionals, you know. And he looks to he's he's a good bloke to have around the club as well. Helps everyone, like always wants to do more. Um, even like in you know, Jack will be able to tell you like, like there's a dark place to the old rehab crew, isn't it? Who's the king rehab crew at Exeter? Like the kid, the guy who who's the equivalent? Um, Jack. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I'm probably the king of rehab. I don't know if I'm that good. I'm the chairman, yeah. <laughs> in terms of bringing people. It is pretty dark. When you're in rehab and you see someone come Man. in and leave and you're like nowhere near playing, it's pretty, it's pretty dark day. So to be able to keep that up is, uh, and to be able to be positive the whole time is, is pretty, it's a pretty impressive thing to be able to do. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to be as positive as I can in there. But like Will said then, you have some dark, dark days in there. Um Especially our, our setup, because we train at the stadium. Our gym is actually um, under this main stand. So in the winter, you come in, it's dark, and then you leave at like five o'clock and it's dark and you've had no daylight for the day because there's no windows in there or anything. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty miserable place sometimes. So uh, I won't give myself that title because I don't know if I'm positive all the time, but I try to be. Just quickly for, for you, Ryan, different proposition for Scotland this weekend up against Australia. You've obviously won five on the bounce. Uh, predictions for you? Um, I think they'll go all right. I think they'll do well. We've um, we've done well against us over here and over there, to be fair, the last few times we've played them. So I think the boys will do the job. I reckon it'll be 24-12, I reckon it's will be. I'm Quick quite um, optimistic, yeah, of, of how they're going to go this all. I think they've got a bloody good squad when you look through that team, team they've got. Obviously missing a cap quality back rows, you know, but... That'll be that's that'll be the one that'll be the reason, and we'll keep pushing I'll, that envelope. I'll, I'll be no, I'll be no use after this old day. I tell you that. <laughs> uh, Max, Jack, quick uh, prediction on Scotland Australia. Thirty six twelve to Australia. Oh, fight and talk. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's your score prediction? Come on, you got to be backing your old mate, didn't you? Yeah, no, I back my boys. <clears throat> They'll have a good game, but Australia, I think, will still win. Really. Yeah, I think so. And we're talking of predictions. Andy Powell predicted on the show last week Wales would lose by 40 points to the All Blacks. Uh, Mystic Powell, it was. He was almost right. Ended up losing 54 16. It was the depleted Wales squad. Uh, although they were still in the game going into the last quarter. If we're being positive, Max, were you impressed overall by that fight? I mean, all those Welsh boys are very good. But yeah, it was a massively mitigated team. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought they had a good fight back. I thought when Reese Priestland got on, it, it it got a lot a lot better for them. It was yeah, it was it was what it was. I just thought the whole the problem with that game was the whole time all the players, even the ones involved, were saying how hard it was. I think they sort of assumed that narrative early doors, especially the press, even the Welsh press. They were like, "We're going to get hammered." <laughs> Everyone was like, "We're getting hammered," and I was, "Well, if you're going to be saying you're going to get hammered, then yeah, it's, it's quite difficult not to get hammered." How much does that seep into mentality before before games? I mean, obviously. Well, I, just, I don't know if it's like a trick. Like, it depends what sort of gamemanship's going on. I suppose going into most games, like in the Prem and stuff, you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to win. Like, you've got to be optimistic in that way. But when you're about to play the All Blacks and you're looking around at the Welsh team and you're seeing some players who don't play as much or these guys aren't involved, like, does... This is the subconscious sort of take control of that. I'm not sure, but like this is international rugby, and all those guys are massively competitive, and but I'm, I'm, that's why I sort of noticed about that week that build up into the game in terms of the media, anyway. Well, it's the first time we got to see the All Blacks up close and personal uh, on these shores for a couple of years. Who who impressed uh, impressed you guys most from from their side? I like Blackadder. He looks fun. He looks desperate to cause carnage. Who else was class? Obviously, Bodie Barrett, hundred test. He was he was naughty. Well, he scored three three minutes in hundred. Yeah, hundred test. He, he's just gone right. Fuck it, I'm going in the set. Three minutes in, scores. How bloody good is he? Eh? But then Richie Mwanga is so fun to watch as well, and you're just like, this is a nightmare situation for a coach. He's yeah, just right. going like here, there, everywhere with those two. That's them, them throughout their team, though. They're just. Like ridiculous, the like strength and depth. Eh? It is um, you've never seen anything like it, and especially at the moment. But um, no, he's he's pretty special. Old Bone Barrett. And Will Jordan also looking kind of ridiculous coming out of everything that he's doing at the moment. 
Fuck yeah, he's he's awesome as well, isn't he? He's just like he, he again someone that comes into the team and just the confidence to just go out there and play the way he does, like these chip and chases and stuff like that. He does. He's just he's ridiculous as well. So um, you looked at Wales, like seeing that game, like watching. I obviously didn't watch the whole game, but watching the highlights, it looks like Wales are in the game. The big the, the big turning point is that yellow card. If we went by the rules and they said it was a red card. It would have been a very different game. It was like, what? It was 6-18 or something. Was it coming into half time? Something like that. Like that could have easily been a red card. That would have swung the game. You could have seen Wales winning that game suddenly if the All Blacks had that red card. I know we said earlier we shouldn't be looking for them, but um, yeah, I thought they, were, they looked all right first half and it just fell away, didn't it? The, the second half a little bit. Someone who did get up close and personal with the All Blacks themselves. I don't know if you saw it. Jarve 69, the prankster who managed to get on the field and play oh, three times. He's class. done it, right? During the cricket, he did it at the, uh, at the NFL for the, for, for, on the pitch at Tottenham a couple of weeks ago. And now he shared the national anthem <coughs> with the All Blacks. What did you guys make of that cameo? Did you see you know, like, the background video of that? Like they showed him getting changed and then up in the stand and then running down the stadium and jumping over. He did it so easily. Like, yeah, I, I didn't think I didn't think they actually, had to do that. I, exactly. Like, unbelievable. Maybe they thought it was a sub. That's what I'm thinking. Did they think it was a sub coming on? But the funny <laughs> thing was, I'm pretty sure he, 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 he stuck to the COVID protocol. He didn't put his arm around anyone. He thought, I'll keep two meters because he, he didn't want to ruin the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, respect to him, respect to him. I was, in, I was down the beach in Bike today and some woman, swear to God, had a mask on in the sea. She was actually I in the sea. Women, and she had a look at my Instagram, she had a mask on in the sea. I was like, what are you doing? So, oh my God. fair play to old Jarbo69, whoever he is, because he, uh, he didn't want to ruin the bubble. Fair, fair play. Well, it's hilarious. He's just there during the national anthem. And, the, and to be fair, the All Blacks are just kind of carrying on I mean like, this, there's quite there's a little sly look to the left but we're talking about it today you know what it's like when you stand up there beside each other you don't really know who's beside you do you you kind of just you know wander up and then if you link arms you link arms but if not you don't you never really look beside so like I can see how he's got away with it we were saying today how brilliant would it be if he like snuck to the back of a hacker as well he was just in the background <laughs> of that <or> <laughs> yeah have you got any uh, sort of memorable spectator moments or, or streaking affairs that you've seen during your uh, during your playing careers? We had one at our place. I think it was when uh, when Freddie Burns, he was playing for Gloucester, I think, uh, came on and tried to rugby tackle him, and Freddie like flipped him over, like <laughs> like literally judoed him over his over his hip. It was brilliant. That's as far as that's as close as I've come. You would you wouldn't you wouldn't be horrible to him. You, you'd be like, I'd I'd give him the ball. Yeah, I would. I'd, yeah, come on, mate. Come on, get, in, get him in the scrum. Imagine not putting him in the second row and being like, right, there we go, mate. You wanted to get up and close. <laughs> too right, too right. I love it. I, I, I'm all four streakers. I think they're brilliant. Yeah, more, more. Come on. <laughs> That's the headline. I'm all four streakers. More of them. <laughs> yeah, get amongst it. Yeah. <laughs> Although, like, you see some guys absolutely end streakers. Like, um... Yeah, they, they get angry, don't they? Yeah, like Ollie Barkley in that time, smoked that geese, like proper dump tackled him. Chris Halafia twice in one game. Ended yeah, but they, they've done that for a laugh, haven't they? What, the streak? I don't think, no. I think, no, Ollie looked, I don't know. Ollie Barkley is not, is not mully, he's not going to mullered someone, like, being like that. Mate, you can find it on YouTube, bro. He looks like he's, I don't know if he's trying to mull Yeah, him, I was going to say the same as well. Freddie, Freddie looked pretty angry. It is on YouTube. Yeah. He looked pretty angry when he did it. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm sort of with you. I'm in your camp, Brian. I'm like, yeah, just have like tap tackle, have a laugh at him. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, let's get more streakers out there. Um, let's go. Ireland up against the Japan side who caused Australia some real problems. Quick predictions on that one, fellas? No idea what sort of Ireland team is going to play. I kind of want Japan to win that. I'm going to go Japan by like three. They're going to surprise them. Oh, no, maybe you can't be surprised by Japan now. No, I'm going Japan by three. I want Japan to win. I'd like to see Japan win. Not not because I love Japan, but the other reason. <laughs> Everyone does but, love Japan. Then, then again, our old mate Zeebs is back playing, and I'd love to see him do well. The king of Ireland. Um, it, it's good to see him back. But, yeah, Japan, I'm going with you, Max. I'm Japan by 10, mate. I'm Japan by 10. Yeah. 
Japan by 12. <laughs> why, why, do, why do you want Japan to win? I like Japan. I think it's cool. Yeah, no, I do like Japan. They are, they're, the they are, they are, they are quite exciting, though, aren't they? I remember when we played yeah. them with Twickenham a few years ago. They, they chopped the ball around a bit. That was ahead of the game. It's not the last time Alex Lazowski played for England, I think. First half. We don't need to bring that up. That's so harsh. It's the last time you boys played for them, I think. Oh, rugby pig, Mark. Who <laughs> 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 that? No, but okay. Just quickly on that, Jack. I mean, Eddie Jones showed he could be pretty ruthless. I mean, he literally ended international careers after a first half poor first half performance against Japan a couple of years ago. Uh, what's what's the angriest you've ever seen him get against uh, at you or one of your teammates? Well, yeah, the Japan game was up there. I think obviously we didn't play too well in the first half. He was pretty obviously he was very happy in the World Cup, as you can imagine. Uh, While well, the boys done, uh, I'd say yeah, Japan up was probably was probably one of the most angry I've seen him um, in terms of the game sort of stuff, um, just because of how how poor our performance was really in the first half. I think. Yeah, there's a lot of reports that he can be, you know, quite brutal and aggressive and stuff. What's your what's your take and your interactions with him? I think obviously, yeah, he's he's got that rep, hasn't he? I think, but for me, it's the same as like, any coach I'm with. As long as you're any coach is going to respect you, as long as you're working hard um, and you're doing everything you can do. You know, sometimes it may come across that you're not, or I don't know. You're going to have different different interactions with him but I think you know same as any coach Rob whoever I've same at the club with Rob sorry as long as you are giving 100% you're doing all you can do to try and win that game I think then it comes across pretty obvious that that you're there and you're doing the right thing so um, for me I try not to look too much into that it's just about obviously I keep myself to myself I think hey, if any if any any Jones has asked you have you looked much into Japan this week and you went don't really do much analysis, mate. I uh, prefer, you know, take every game as it comes. I don't really change much. <laughs> He's tearing your head off. Look, mate, you're going home. <laughs> Speaking of which, right, <clears throat> all three all three of you boys, but yeah, Jack, I don't know. Have you witnessed, there's a story from Marlon Yard in Dylan Hartley's autobiography, and it goes like this. Marlon drove straight down to the England camp after playing in a big club game, and Eddie greeted him saying, how are you feeling, mate? Marlon honestly replied saying, oh, a bit tired. And he told him to fuck off. Why don't you just fuck off then, mate? <laughs> what? Marlon replied, if you're tired, then fuck off. I don't want tired players here. Just fuck right off. <laughs> I think I was there. I'm not there, but I was in camp at the stage. And I remember, yeah. I remember that happening, I think, that because he came down quite late and not many of the boys even saw him. But by the next morning, he'd already gone. Um, so yeah, I'm not too, I'm pretty sure that's how it went, to be honest. <laughs> yes, it's the with that, like that would have been, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Eddie Jones, but it would have been a joke, wouldn't it? Go on then, mate, fuck off. Don't bother coming in. Oh, yeah, no, it, anyone, anyone else got a weird mind games treatment like that? Who was not working hard at the camp? No, he probably can't tell us that, actually. Probably, probably counterintuitive, hey, isn't it? <laughs> hey, keep yourself to yourself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, final, final, final one, uh, boys. Jack, just a quick uh, strongest fifteen England prediction uh, for the match from you. Oh, don't make me do this. I don't know. Um, <laughs> too political. <laughs> um, I don't even know. I'll go backs. I reckon. This is what I reckon is going to happen. He doesn't know the difference between a tight end and a loose end. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, backs will do, yeah? Yeah, backs will do. Yeah, okay. back. I'll yeah. go backs, so I'll go back. I reckon he's going to go. I'm trying to think who's even in the squad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is, is Ben Young's or, or is, is Randall in there? Randall's injured. Ben, oh, oh he's injured. Yeah, he'll go, he'll, go, he'll go Ben Young's. I reckon he'll go Marcus Smith, although they reckon he might be injured now. I read earlier. But I reckon this is what he was planning. He was going to go Ben Youngs, Marcus Smith. And I reckon he was going to go Farrell at 12. I would love to say Slady at 13, but I reckon he would have gone Manu. Yeah. Um, Johnny May, one wing. Rad one on the other wing. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then maybe, and then, is Malin's in? Yeah, yeah, he's in. He is. Maybe Malin's at fullback. If, is he wearing skins even if they're playing on a grass pitch? 
That'd be pretty ball- ballsy, that wouldn't it? Well, if you score four tries wearing skins, I'm wearing. I'll wear them again. The Mate, fuck up. I'm wearing trackies next time. <laughs> 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 fucking proper bin bag trackies, mate. <laughs> yeah, and, you, okay. and you honestly couldn't care less about forwards. No, of course I care. Um, I love, I love rugby. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, so a tight head. <laughs> forwards <laughs> put themselves. <laughs> uh, Jack, just a quick one. Does Henry Slade? Do you think he gets a bit? It's kind of depressing every time you hear that Owen Farrell's being picked because then you're like, oh, he's so he's taking. Inside centre, then it's basically left to fight it out when perhaps Tuilagi and Slade in the centres might be the best call. Yeah, I think every coach, every team the same. They always like that ball playing 12 now, don't they? And then they like the the big Bosch 13, whereas it used to be, you know, big Bosch 12. But you swap them over all the time now. But, you know, most most coaches do like a ball player at 12 with a big, with a big 13. Um, so if you are going to pick a Marcus at 10, because he is on form at the moment, and you're going to pick, you know, Farrell again because of his his leadership and how much you know experience he's got. Then are you going to pick Slady as well? Because realistically, all those three players are are pretty similar. They're all ball players, and you do need a big Bosch, a big boy to get you over the game line sometimes. And when Manu's on fire, which he is at the moment, and he's fit, he's there's no one like him in the world. I don't think so. Um, it's very hard to leave him at the, the side. So. You know, I don't know. It, it, it obviously depends on what Eddie's feeling that week as well. Um, he, he's team. He's team rehab, by the way. Manager to Alangi. He's. He's. I think he's done it. Worked it well. Now he trains when he wants to train and plays when he wants to play. Sadly, that's all the time we've got left on this week's Rugby Pass Offload. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please like and subscribe. Huge thank you to Ryan, to Max, and to Jack. And we'll see you all next week. Farewell, people. I'll let the beach know you miss it. You enjoyed Dubai, big fella. Yeah, weird and wonderful. Bastard. (laughs)